Nine million people woke up in New York City today and there was exactly the right amount of Starbucks coffee and there was exactly the right amount of peanuts and exactly the right amount of toilet paper, right? You didn't see, you didn't uh, listen to the news and it said, oh my gosh, shortages of toilet paper in New York City, right? Same thing happened in Melbourne, right? There's like five million people woke up in Melbourne and you didn't hear anything today that said, oh my gosh, uh, there's not enough uh, hot dogs in Melbourne, big shortage of hot dogs in Melbourne, right? You'd be totally astonished if that were the case. Um, and guess what? Same thing's gonna happen tomorrow, right? Same thing is gonna happen the next day. So, I mean, every day, right? We should just wake up and be totally amazed at how this thing works. Uh, we just sort of sit there and think, oh, yeah, that's the way it works. But it is truly amazing. So, what, what, uh, the purpose of my lectures is to be able to, uh, to uh, have it so that you can go out and explain it to someone else you can at least point out things that they, uh, that they wouldn't otherwise have been, have been thinking about. Um, so there is a uh, Sherlock Holmes story. How, how many of you read Sherlock Holmes? Okay, good. Um, the first Sherlock Holmes story um, is uh, a, a scandal in Bohemia. And what happens is uh, uh, Sherlock is uh, up in his, uh, in his room and Watson's walking by and Watson sees Sherlock up there and he goes, um, gee, maybe I'll go up and talk to him. So he walks up the stairs, opens the door, Sherlock has him in, they're sitting around talking for a while. And then Sherlock says to Watson, Watson, how many steps are there coming up from the ground floor? And Watson goes, oh, geez, I don't know. And, Watson, and Sherlock says, well, how many times have you walked up and down these steps? And, and uh, Watson says, well, geez, like a couple hundred times. And he says, Watson, the problem with you, Watson, is you see, but you don't observe, okay? We do tons of that. Why you get economic, you, you get public policy that runs us off in the wrong directions, and it causes unintended consequences that we weren't thinking about, is because people see, but they don't observe. And the purpose of, uh, of my talks here are to get you to just try to observe things. Like I just said, just observe the fact that five million people woke up in Melbourne and you got the right amount of rent. French toast was here, okay? No shortage of any. My, my wife and I went down to get something for breakfast and there was uh, lots of places where you could get muffins and she drinks coffee and different kinds of coffees and all that stuff. Uh, and and it, it, just, it just shows up. Let's think about this. How many in here either grew or killed anything that they ate in the last week? Okay, what did you do? Uh, salad. A what? Lettuce. So you grew some lettuce. Yes? Parsley. Some pasta. Okay. Parsley. What was it? Parsley. Oh, parsley. Okay, yes. <laughs> See, I don't... Uh, the only, people asked me when I was coming over here, um, do you speak Australian? And uh, <laughs> I said, the only Australian that I know is, um, that's not a knife, this is a knife, <laughs> okay? Um, but yeah, so we had some of that, is that it, right? Well, okay, think about how many in here are wearing anything that they made themselves. Okay, um, think about how hungry we'd all be right now if all we were eating what we had made ourselves in the last week. Think of what we would be looking like if all we were wearing is what we made. Okay, now you can stop thinking about that right now. Um, and how many built their, uh, their house or their apartment that they, that they live in themselves, the whole thing themselves? Did you do the whole thing yourself? Okay, okay, all right. But now let's think through this. Food, clothing, shelter. You didn't make any of it, right? The essentials, food, clothing, shelter. You guys didn't make any of it. Somebody else made it. How in the world did that happen, right? How, I mean, how in the world does it make it that we don't make any of the stuff that we use every day, right? We only make, we make something, we make something individually, but then what do we do? We swap it, right? And we, we trade. So there's a whole lot of cooperation 
that's going on in a market system. You hear people talk about competitive markets, right? And there is competition in markets. If I am making hot dogs, right, uh, and you could compete with me making a different kind of hot dog, and uh, I'll try and make hot dogs uh, less expensively than you or better tasting than you or something like that. So there is competition. So you hear a lot about competitive <coughs> markets, but you don't hear much about the coordination that happens in markets. Now let's think a little bit um, how many in here learned to write with a pencil? That was the first thing learned to write with, okay? Um, what if I said, okay, I am the Minister of Education, and uh, pencils are very important uh, to, in fact, here's what I am. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Prime Minister of Australia, and uh, I, I know that pencils are super important for education, Education is very important, so we don't want the market to be dealing with, uh, with pencils. What I'm going to do is I'm going to appoint one of you folks as the minister of pencils. Okay? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to interview you about pencils. Okay? Now, just to give you an idea, um, in 1564 was the first time they put wet, uh, wood the Germans put wood on pencils so you didn't get graphite all over your hands. But All right, so, wh okay, what is this, this stuff in the, in the middle there that, that you write with? What that's called? Graphite. Yeah, graphite. Okay, where do you get graphite? In the ground, yes, you're right. You're right. Um, who is a large, I mean, you got to get this graphite from somewhere. Where are you going to go to get graphite? That would be... Sri Lanka, right? Sri Lanka is one of the largest uh, uh, producers of graphite. Now, if it was just graphite, though, it would collapse. So you got to mix it with mud, right? So uh, what, what place is one of the largest producers of mud that goes into making pencils? That would be the state of Mississippi, okay? You guys aren't doing too well. Okay, um, now if you observe a pencil and you look at it, all right, um, it's sort of shiny. And it's shiny because there's candia wax in here. And where do you think you get candia wax? And I'll give you a hint. <laughs> it's spelled C-A-N-D-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, and you call it candia. That's Spanish, but it's Mexico, okay? <laughs> So you got Mexico. All right. Well, now let's think about the wood. Now, the wood you can get from a number of places, right? If this were in the United States, you would get it uh, from Georgia or you'd get it from the Pacific Northwest. Um, but then when you put uh, the uh, uh, wood, there's, you know, there's a lacquer on here, right, to make it sort of shiny and so it doesn't feel bad on your hands. Um, so this lacquer uh, is made from castor beans. Okay, um, and uh, castor beans you get from, does somebody say India? No, close though, I India, India, right? So, uh, so India is here. Now this uh, is, this, this is a, um, a, a, an alloy of brass here, right? And uh, you get brass from iron ore, um, which you could get in the, uh, in, um, in the uh, could get it here in, in Australia, right? Um, and, uh, or actually in, in Michigan, they do have uh, iron, iron ore up in the, um, that we call the UP of, of, uh, of uh, Michigan. Um, and it also, you have um, zinc uh, from Peru uh, that's in here. Now, the rubber that's on the end, uh, you can get rubber from... Malaysia, yeah. Malaysia, Malaysia and Brazil are the biggest places to get rubber for, uh, for these things. But the rubber isn't really the abrasive. The rubber just holds the abrasive, and the abrasive is fractice, okay? Um, and uh, fractice is made from rapeseed oil, which you get from Indonesia. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So... You now know all that, so now you're eligible to be the, uh, the, the minister of pencils here. Um, now, here's the thing. I want you to produce 
just the right amount of pencils. And here's what I want. You, I don't want you to set up a factory so you've got enough wood for 100,000 pencils and you've only collected enough rubber for 30,000 pencils. You've got to have all, these pen, all this stuff's coming from all over the world, right? And you've got to get it from all over the world and you get it from all over the world in the right amounts and then you've got to figure out where you're going to put your production facilities. Are you going to put it in, uh, in uh, Perth? Are you going to put the production facilities in <laughs> Sydney? Or where are you going to put those production facilities? And then you've got to get pencils out to every retail outlet in Australia. And not only every, and I don't want to walk in to uh, a, a, a store in Australia and there's 100,000 boxes of pencils sitting around. I want to walk in and there's enough pencils that you can choose, right? You, you can say, well, gee, I want a number two or a number three or I want the kind, you know, the, the green kind or red. I want you to be able to choose, but I don't want lots and lots of them everywhere. And I don't want it just on July 10th. I want it on August 3rd, I want it on September 9th, I want it on December 27th. I want to have exactly the right amount of pencils at every retail outlet in Australia at every moment in time. Okay? And how expensive are these going to be? You're going to do all this stuff, you're going to get this stuff from all over the world, you're going to get it distributed to every retail outlet in Australia at every moment in time, and how expensive, anybody, how much does a pencil cost? Anybody know? What, you know why don't you know? Because they're so inexpensive, they're like manna, they just show up, <laughs> right? You open up a drawer, there's a bunch of pencils there, you never bought the pencils, right? Somebody gave them to you, your neighbor had them, or whatever, right? That's just amazing how this thing has parts from all over the world brought together, stored at some place until you want it, and it's such a rate that it's so cheap that you guys don't even know what it costs. Markets do that, right? And you know that if you were the minister of pencils, you'd never be able to do that, right? I was always say in the United States, uh, I'd say, well, um, do you think uh, do you think you could do that? Uh, you know, as, as no, you know, I say, Secretary of Education, you think I could you could do that with pencils? And they say no. And I say, well, do you think you could do it for healthcare? Right? 